Community Development Manager at Strawberry Hill House, which is in Twickenham. And for the past eight years, we've been running something called the Feel Good Garden, which is a monthly workshop for those living with dementia and their carers, offering gardening as the, the, the main event, but also art, flower arranging, singing, working with the medical herbalist and all sorts of things like that. And of course, bringing people together to make them feel less isolated, to provide respite for carers, as well as stimulation for those living with dementia. And uh, as someone said, always with Marks and Spencer's cakes and biscuits <laughs> and lots and lots of tea. So it's all going famously in live and show up and we think we've, we've got it pretty well down. However, when they came, they said, yeah, that's all well and good what you're doing for these groups, but there's very little support here for the general visitor living with dementia. So um, that feedback from Enliven actually informed our bit. So instead of doing a project, as everyone else has done here, we decided that we would find out what uh, would make visiting Strawberry Hill a better experience for those living with dementia and, as far as possible, meet those needs. So initially, these are some of the groups that we already work with, just flying through those. Um, and so how were these decisions taken? Firstly, I gave a presentation, as I'm sure all of you did, on Zoom where people living with dementia gave their opinions on what makes a heritage site feel welcoming in general and how they thought we could improve our offer in particular. So um, we set up, first of all, an access chain so we set up an access chain to test the visitor experience for people living with dementia and their carers. Uh, we welcome secret shoppers and not so secret shoppers. Lorraine and Wayne came and helped me uh, to go around the house. And we also worked with the people that were doing our workshops already and members of the dementia friendly communities in Richmond also came to our site and had a look at, at what was going on. The access trail was designed to look at the decision people make, the decision before they come to visit, the journey to the house, the car park, and the entrance to the house, the on-site experience in the house and garden, including using the toilets and cafe, and then leaving and returning home. So the results of this uh, were that the people living with dementia said that all the staff and the volunteers were very welcoming, which is really good because everyone said that's really important. Um, feedback from the online group said that for them this was paramount, especially when the fabric of the building could not be altered. Uh, and that's true with us, we're a grade one listed building, light, dark, stairs, all sorts of things going on that make it quite hard for some of our visitors. Um, so they also said that they wanted people to be well trained and to wear the Dementia Friends badge. And this project galvanizes galvanized us into offering further training. So many of our volunteers and staff are trained as part of a rolling program of training to be undertaken with the support of uh, Mary Therese in um, Age UK in Richmond. The uh, secret shoppers wanted to make sure that people would understand what it meant if people were wearing the sunflower lanyards and suggested that it should be part of the training for all staff and volunteers. They also noted that not all staff are guilty and volunteers always wear their lanyards and this is important if you need to find someone to help you. So interestingly, while many saw problems that we'd already seen in the house and gardens, all were keen for us to ensure that the house remained historically accurate. I did not want us to make any change that would be detrimental to the authenticity of the experience. So that, that's really important. And I know that there's a get out of jail a card for, for um, historic houses that you have to make reasonable adaptions, but reasonable can really mean anything. They understood that, that these changes could not be made, but said that where structural changes could not be made, more information was key. So we started with the website. The carer suggested that the website looked good, but, while, but it was quite tricky to navigate and they needed to be more information about accessibility. They wanted us to add a search button, which we did. Uh, and they also wanted a link to a named person. So people can now contact me by name, 
because they don't want to write to inquiry at, because nobody believes anyone reads inquiry at, <laughs> um, including me. Uh, so uh, it's really important to have a person that they, they are actually going to contact. So we've, we've done that. that. Those were two quite easy things to do. Um, one of the group, one of the persons, in fact, Lorraine, who came, said that she didn't want to have to announce to the whole ticket office that she had an additional need, that she had dementia. She didn't want to do that. She wanted, if she needed to, to actually be able to uh, tell someone in advance so that they could help her. So we've taken that on board. So we've got, you know, a, a place that people can actually ask us for, all, for any sort of additional need. We also commissioned an accessibility film um, that will be relevant to many groups with additional needs. The film covers the points raised uh, by the uh, secret shoppers and our access panel and will hopefully make people feel more confident about visiting us. Welcome to Strawberry Hill House and Garden. This video is designed to help you plan your visit. In this video, we will familiarise you with the general surroundings and possible travel options. A detailed sheet with travel instructions to Strawberry Hill House and Garden and other useful information can also be downloaded from our website. If you're travelling by train, you will want to arrive at Strawberry Hill Station. From the station, it's a short walk of 5 to 10 minutes to the house. If you're travelling by bus, this is the nearest stop. From here, it's only a very short walk of 1 to 2 minutes to the house. If you're travelling by car, then this is our free car park. We currently have three dedicated disabled parking spaces. Our welcome area is located at the back of the house next to the cafe. Our staff and volunteers wear red lanyards and if you need any help during your visit, please speak to one of our friendly team, many of whom have undertaken training sessions on interacting with people living with dementia. If you haven't pre-booked your tickets online, please talk to a member of staff in our shop to purchase these. You can also ask for a map to help you navigate, as well as a brief history of the house and garden. If you require a wheelchair, there is one available to borrow for free. Please ask a member of staff for assistance. If you fancy a drink or something to eat, you can pop into our cafe, which can be found at the back of the house overlooking the garden. There are toilets in the car park and two toilets located on the ground floor of the house. If you have any accessibility requirements, please find toilets facilities with extra assistance located near the back of the cafe. To begin your visit to the house, you can explore the great parlour on the ground floor and then walk up the staircase in the main entrance hall. Or take the lift to the first floor. Please note the second floor is not accessible using the lift, but don't worry, you can ask us to borrow an iPad with photos of everything to see on the second floor. Some highlights to experience at Strawberry Hill House and Garden that are located on the first floor are Walpole's Gallery, the Round Room and the wonderful stained glass in the Star Chamber. On the second floor you can visit the library and Walpole's Bed Chamber. Once you've finished your tour of the interior of the house, you may want to explore the gardens at Strawberry Hill House. For a richer experience, or to find a calm and peaceful place, please ask a member of our team for the Strawberry Hill House and Garden Sensory Trail Map. This map will guide you to the best views of the house as well as our famous shell bench. On the weekend, and when we first open on weekdays, the house is often very busy. If you want to come at a quieter time, we suggest you come on a Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday between 1 and 3 p.m. when it is usually quiet. We are not open to the general public on Thursdays and Fridays. On your way out, you may want to pop back into our shop to buy a souvenir. The shop is located close to the entrance where you bought your ticket. We look forward to welcoming you soon at Strawberry Hill House and Garden. So the groups also asked for printable information, so we created two printable documents on the accessibility page. One is the information from the film that you've just seen, just in slide, in a picture form. And the other was a brief history of the house and garden, explaining who Horace Walker was. Um, this was in response to some of the carers who said they liked to have talking points um, so they could chat during their wait. 
the sensory map. So part of our bid was to create a sensory map of the garden. After speaking to the Sensory Trust for advice, who were very, very helpful, we undertook sensory mapping by working with those living with dementia and their carers, as well as practitioners who work with people living with dementia and our own garden volunteers to identify sensory highlights. We asked people to meet us in the garden and talked about the senses by giving them fruit to taste, um, essential oils to smell and pine cones, pine cones to feel and asked them to experience the garden using their senses, including finding the best places to experience the garden through sight and sound. They were then given red flags and asked to record where they thought the best places were. Volunteers went round with the secret shoppers and other groups to record their reasons for putting flags in certain positions. And this information was recorded as a basis for the trail, looking for consensus on the areas of the garden that, uh, so that the position of additional seating <coughs> or quiet areas could be identified. I then sent the map uh, with lots of scribbled results to Stephen and he and an artist created this map um, for us. And this map shows two trails, one through the woodland and one uh, that is easier to navigate in red that goes in front of the woodland, uh, and as you can see there. Um, there are just nine suggestions of where to look at the best views of the house and uh, listen to birdsong, crush bay leaves or rosemary for their smell, compare the bark of different trees and take three lemon verbena herbs, herb leaves home to make a delicious cup of tea. So all the senses are covered. Obviously, taste is quite um, a difficult in a garden. You don't want people picking the wrong things, anything that's dangerous. But herbs and the lemon verbena is particularly nice because you can, it does make a, a nice cup of tea. So um, one of the problems with the garden um, that was identified was that the woodland walk uh, is fairly steep, both getting into it and getting out of it. This is the woodland walk. Um, so we decided, that, um, because poor balance can be a symptom of dementia, but also many of our visitors um, have a, a poor balance, we decided to spend part of the funding on creating a natural banister. Um, to keep the costs down, we, uh, the gardener in charge, bless him, uh, with a, a volunteer who fortunately is a carpenter, managed to create this and it, it's really it looks really nice mm. and it's it's really good to go in and and then there's another one coming out which isn't quite finished yet but anyway uh, it will be by the time anyone wants to go in the garden so the last thing we did with the uh, the money that we got was to create some new signage the signage was looking very dilapidated um the pro the signage over the whole property is part of a much larger hlf bid that um, is going to go in soon, but we decided we would actually um, buy some sort of nice uh, looking slate signage that we can write on uh, and, you know, things can change, we can change it up uh, as, we're, as, as the seasons change. So uh, lastly, I just want to um, touch on the legacy of this project, making Strawberry Hill House accessible, uh, as, as accessible as possible for those living with dementia has been a kind of pilot for a much bigger project to Im improve accessibility for all. And I think everyone said that if you do, uh, if you improve a uh, life for one group, you improve uh, the visit experience for everybody. Um, so to that end, we set up an access panel um, wh who actually influence this project, but will also influence other um, projects um, and exhibition layouts and things like that. Those do include people living with dementia, those living with physical disability, visual and hearing impairment, neuro neurologically diverse groups and the elderly, as well as people working in those sectors. They've already looked at the access trail results and added their expertise to a wider document. Making the house more accessible for everyone with additional needs. We now have regular meetings and they will be consulted before um, any changes are made. The garden seating is particularly dreadful <laughs> and not fit for purpose. As you can see, this bench is, um, is you know, it's no good really unless you're five years old. 
because it's low, it's got no back, it's got no arms. So um, we, couldn't, we couldn't afford new benches. So what we decided to do was to ask people to dedicate a bench as part of a legacy initiative. We haven't actually launched it, but we've got two um, people who have said they would like to, you know, when we were talking about it, they said they'd like to leave, um, leave a bench you know, for somebody that came to one of our groups. So uh, hopefully we'll get seven uh, quite quickly. I hope so. And lastly, this is uh, very boring, but quite important. Everybody that sees these stairs says we need a banister. We can't just put a banister uh, there because um, we've got this uh, 19th century um, iron staircase and it's right you know, in front of the house. So um, we are, but, but what I've done is, is actually to talk to some uh, blacksmiths, artistic blacksmiths, and, and talking about commissioning one, which again will go into the next project to make the house more accessible. And this, these stairs less treacherous because they really are. And um, it's, it's, a bit, it's a big problem. So in a nutshell, the Enliven project has enabled us to make the house more accessible for people living with dementia, but it's also been a springboard for a wider project to make the house more accessible for everyone. And I'd like to thank um, Enliven for um, supporting us, not just financially, but with, uh, especially Stephen, with all the um, emails and hours on the phone, sort of talking me through doing this. So that, I think, is it. Thank you.